Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. It's nice to have you back again. As we continue with our subject, looking at the fundamentals of computer networking, though our subject, we call it fundamentals of information systems. But if you look at our course outline, it's mainly looking at fundamentals of computer networking or fundamentals of networking. So today we will look at a different topic or a new topic as we continue to look at the basics and the fundamentals of computer networking. Today we want to look at computer network models or the types of computer architectures that are there. But before we proceed to look at that, let's just have a recap of the areas that we have covered to date. In our second video, we looked at software, where we defined what software is. Then we also looked at the various software types that are there, where we said there are two main categories of software which are application software and system software. Then we went on to break down the system software into various subcategories or various subtypes of system software, which include utilities, um, what are the programs do you remember from what we have talked about on when we went on to break down system software. We mentioned about five of them, and I'm sure you should be able to remember the other four besides utilities. Maybe I'll just give you one more. We also have software drivers. Probably you can recite the other three for yourself. Then we all went on to look at the categories of application software where we indicated that the categories of application software that a user can use is largely dependent on the work or the activity that one has to do. And there are many categories of application software. I think in the slide that we used, we listed over 10 categories of application software and I asked you to go and look or identify five types of application software that are on your machine. Then you familiarize with, with them. You write a one-page document highlighting how you access that software, how you use it, its advantages, its disadvantages, etc. I suppose yeah, now you, you have done that. I request you to make a submission of that. Then we went on to define what a network operating system is. And I remember the definition that we used, we, I gave you a definition where I put the word network in quotes when I was defining an operating system. The emphasis being, the emphasis being that a network operating system and an operating system, there's a very thin line that separates the two. An operating system can be a network operating system. A network operating system can be an operating system. The functionalities of an operating system satisfies the needs of a network operating system. The functionalities of a network operating system satisfies the needs of an operating system. So these days, it's very difficult to put a clear demarcation line or to separate the two. Though, of course, there are fully-fledged network operating systems that are out there. And we on down to list the various functions or characteristics of network operating system. Uh, well, we have a lot of them, and some of them include interconnectivity, file sharing, resource sharing, security, network administration, mentioned by a few. So today we want to look at computer network models or computer network architectures. From your research and or from your reading that you have been doing of late, what are the 
basic computer network modules that are out there that you know of. Right. The first model or the first computer network that we want to look at is a peer-to-peer -peer network. This is a kind of network where all devices in the network are equals. They have equal capabilities or equal functionalities. They share resources equally amongst themselves. And if, if any one of the network devices or the network nodes in the network fails, it doesn't affect the functionality of the network. The network still continues to function. And I think this network is familiar with a lot of you guys who like to download movies using torrents. Those are peer-to-peer -peer networks where you're sharing files also on different computers across the web. So this kind of network is easy to set up. And I think one these days you can also come up with your own peer-to-peer -to -peer network using applications like ShareIt where you can just set up your small peer-to-peer -peer network between peer devices, be it mobile devices or laptops, and you are able to share files. So this is basically what a peer-to-peer -peer network is. Then the next model that we want to look at is a client-server network. Let me just try to zoom here. I was hoping that the images will appear fully, but the, but I think even as it stands, the main difference or what differentiates a peer-to-peer -peer network and a client-server network is that in a client-server network, there is a one computer that controls all the resources in the network. That computer determines who accesses what on the network and when and how. This is different from what is there in a peer-to-peer -peer network. If you look at this diagram, this computer can communicate with this computer without the need to involve any other device. This computer can communicate with this computer. So if you look at these arrows, they're just indicating that in this network, every computing device has the ability or is able to communicate with any other device in the network without any other device coming in between as an intermediate. But now if you look at this model, the client-server network, for this computer to communicate with this one, it has to go through what this computer which controls what the network resources. So what it means is if this center or the controlling computer goes down, it means the network goes down as well. But you note that these days, most of the networks that we have, they are based on what? On this architecture be it the internet, be it the local area network in most institutions, there is one central computing what resource that ties together all the networks, or sorry, all the devices in the network. And if that device goes down, it means the network will not be functional. However, if one device in the network fails, it means the network still functions as long as that device that has failed is not what the file server or the one that controls the resources of the network. So those are the two basic or starting points that I want you to understand and appreciate when you look at networks. Peer-to-peer -peer networks and the client-server network architectures. These provide the building blocks for all the networks that we have out there. Now we want to look at the types of networks that we have. 
I know from the two that we've talked about, the peer-to-peer -peer network and the client-server network, if you want to come and fit them in here, you realize both of them might fall and fit nicely in the local area network. So in terms of type of network topologies, these are defined by the geographical region that they cover. So a local area network is a network that is set up in a probably, let's say, if it's a tier one center for learning, you might have a local area network for the technical department, you have a local area network for the admin department, or we might treat the whole network a tier one center for learning, bringing in together the administration, the canteen, the innovation, the business side. We might treat it as what? As one local area network because it is only what on a single campus, which is what tier one center for learning. So a local area network is one that is mainly housed at a single location for an organization. At home, we might, you might have a local area network where you are co connecting all your computing devices at home, your laptops, your TVs, every network, every device that is a computing ability that can connect to the network, you connect it at home, it becomes what? Your local area network. If you go, let's say, at CBZ in town, you might find that the CBZ branch at corner Selu and 2nd Street, they have their own local area network. The CBZ branch probably at corner Angwa and uh, I think it's, what's the street? Next to, I think it's corner Angwa and uh, I can't remember the name of the road, but there's a CBZ branch there. It is, it's what? Local area network. But you realize that those networks for the various CBZ branches, they can be tied together to become what? A wide area network. So on this one, we are now looking at various local area networks b belonging to a single organization that are now what? Tied together so that they can access resources within the organization, but from what? From different office sites. And this can also be referred to as what metropolitan area networks. So we will have the various CBZ branches in Harare connecting or being connected together maybe via a dedicated link covering a mo the, the, the metropolitan area of Harare to come up with what we call a metropolitan area network. Then the last category that I put there deliberately is what? The internet. You realize the internet covers a greater geograph geographical region, bringing together networks from various organizations, various continents, various countries into one single global network. So we might also create what a world area network as well. So maybe I, I should have also added this to the to the one part, the wide area network. That you might have a wide area network connecting even organization from different continents, different countries into what wide area network belong probably to a single organization. So these are the various what types of networks that we have out there that we use in our day-to-day -day operations. These are just diagram demonstrating or indicating uh, the structure of a local area network. It might be via cables where they, we are being tied, we are connected to a router, or it might be via wireless networks. Then for a wide area networks, like I was explaining here, that it can be a connection of what? computers from various continents is demonstrated in this diagram or it can be a connection of computers from various cities as demonstrated in this diagram where we are having these routers interlinking, in, interlinking computers from various geographical areas to come up with what a wide area network so in other words we can say the internet is, is an example of what a wide area network 
So these are the types of networks that we wanted to look at today. And I think I've tried to put them in the most simplified terms so that at least we have an appreciation of the various types of what of networks that we have out there. If there are any questions relating to what we have covered today, feel free to send them or to interact via the discussion part or the discussion forum on the impact learning platform. I think over the weekend I'll upload the PowerPoints for you on the impact platform so that you can access and read them. I know the PowerPoints, there are PowerPoints, that's why it is called a PowerPoint. It doesn't add much, but you then read on these areas that I've tried to simplify so that you make proper notes. I also try to share some reading materials or some expanded materials covering these areas. But I think I've tried to simplify this issue so that when you read, at least you have somewhere to build from. Thank you very much.